You open Visual Studio. Once Visual Studio is open, we go under New, Project, and then instead of VB, we drop down C Sharp. And as you click on C Sharp, it's the same environment. You can do Windows Forms application development as well as you can do Windows Console application development. So if we pick Windows Console application development, let's give it a name of C Sharp Program 1. And click OK. Once that opens up, this environment is very similar to that of VB, but there are some differences. For example, in the VB console environment, the topmost criteria is called module. The entire console application is written inside a module. Here, instead of module, you have somebody called main. And this idea comes from C language, transferred into C++, transferred into Java, as well as in C Sharp. What is the idea of the main? The idea of the main is when you run this application, your program needs a starting point. Your compiler needs to know where to start executing your program. So this main is that method or function that gives the compiler a starting point in your application. So every application should have one main. It's a thread, is a starting thread in your application. The other thing to notice over here compared to VB is So once your computer is up, you can open Visual Studio, and then we are actually reviewing C Sharp today. So uh, once your Visual Studio is up, I'll tell you what to do next. Okay. Okay. So in the meanwhile, I was just explaining what are some of the differences. So again, in VB, you have module, we have main. In VB, you have namespace, we have namespace. But there is one new level that you see over here is called class. So whatever you're doing is part of a program, and that program is referred to as by a class. What is a class? Class is explained as a template, a set of properties and behaviors that represent an object in real world. For example, if I want to write an application for a manufacturing company that produces something as simple as a chair, so I need to translate this real world object into a computer object, so I'm going to create a class called chair. Now I'll see what are some of the properties of the chair. A chair has fabric, chair has adjustments, height, max height, min height, color, all of those properties, product ID. So I'm going to populate my class with all these properties, but these properties will not going to have any values in them because I'm creating a template. Then I'm going to write some behaviors on my chair. For example, I should be able to write a behavior called change fabric. I should be able to write a behavior called adjust height. These are behaviors on this object. Now once I'm done with this template, I'm going to come to this guy called main and I'll say, okay, now I am ready to produce a chair. So I'll say, produce a chair on this chair template, but now I'm going to start feeding values in those properties. I'll say, okay, the fabric is green color. The model number is this. Now I'm starting to give values. So now these are called instances or objects out of that class that I declared as a template. So whenever you take a real world object and model a class out of it, that class is just a template. And then you start writing objects or instances on that class. So anyway, that's one of the other differences that you notice. The third difference that you will notice is in VB you use the terminology of start and end. Something starts like sub and sub, module and module. You do not see that wording over here. What do we have here instead? Opening and closing curly brackets. Notice that main has an opening curly braces. It has an ending curly braces. 
Class program has a starting curly braces and ending curly braces. Name space has a starting curly braces and ending curly braces. Is everybody seeing those changes? Okay. Now, another change that you will notice is in the first two lines. Instead of using the word import, you're using the word using. And every statement ends in semicolon. So in C sharp, every completed statement must end in a symbol. That is a semicolon symbol. That shows that one statement is complete. That is unlike VB. In VB, as soon as you press enter, the next instruction starts. With this, you can pack multiple instructions on a line. So anyway, now if you're in Visual Studio now, pick C sharp as a language of choice, right? And in the console application, we just give it a name and click OK. Great. OK. Now, do you remember how we used to throw output on the screen in, in vb.net? System.console. OK. So we have system.console, which can be shortened as console. Dot as well. You can simply drop the usage of. Now, let's see how we do it here. Console. Still understanding console. Okay, so it's not like just because I've changed the language, everything will change. No. Why? Because all of these features are coming from .NET. So it is the .NET environment that provides you with all these features. So it doesn't matter you're in C Sharp or in VB, those set of classes will stay the same. The main difference will be the syntax. Like some of the things I told you, we don't use N sub, we rather use a closing curly braces. We put every instruction in a semicolon. Uh, the operators may be a little different. For example, in VB, to compare two values, you would use a single equals to the same way you would do an assignment operator. In C sharp, if it's comparison, you use two equals. And if it's an assignment, you use one equals. Those little differences are there. But a majority of the things will carry over. Anything that you can do in VB, you can do in C sharp. No differences, OK? So console dot, what do you write after that? Right line, you notice that's also still there. Right line, welcome to C sharp. Now it's complaining because I am missing a semicolon. It's complaining because I'm missing a semicolon at the end of the line. The moment I put the semicolon in place, it's fixed. So today we are learning C sharp. Okay. So once your Visual Studio fires up, instead of VB, choose C sharp as a language of choice, and we are in the console environment. Okay. Now to run it, Control F5, same deal. And here's your output. And we have to do the Control F5, otherwise it will just... It won't stay. It won't stay. Right. F5 will just run it and will hide it. Control F5 will hold the control so that you can hold the screen. Okay. Welcome to week one, guys, and week 14. I dropped the four. <laughs> okay. Now... If I want to produce more than one lines of output, same deal, I copy this and I paste it on the next line. Now, because of right line, they both will going to come on the line of their own. Because right line forces items to go on the next line. If I were to write in vb.net the same instructions, everything will going to be exactly the same. But what if I want to do this? I want in vb.net to have two statements like welcome to C sharp and another statement is another .net programming language. I want both of these statements in the same instruction. 
but I want them on two separate lines. How can I do that in vb.net? See, I dropped that semicolon from the bottom, from the end, to show you. How do you do that carriage return? So first of all, you have to break out from the double quotes. You have to use a concatenation operator. Then you use VBCRLF, which is VB carriage return line feed. And then you concatenate that with the rest of the message, again, in a double quotes. So that would be your complete line in VB.net. Okay. Now let me show you how that line will be done in C Sharp. I'll just do it right here in the notepad, then we're going to take it over in the VB.net and the C Sharp. Okay. So now I'm translating this instruction in C Sharp. One of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to put a semicolon at the end of the line. Okay. Now in C Sharp, the concatenation operator is not ampersand; rather, it is plus. Plus. Soon I will going to remove that too because C sharp has a much shorter way of doing this than VB does. Okay, so in C sharp plus sign if used between two numbers adds, and if plus sign is between two strings or a string and a number it concatenates. Okay, now instead of VB CRLF, what C sharp does it gives you a line new line character. Again, what does it gives you a new line? Character means it has to be included within the quotes. You don't have to exit the quotes. You can stay within the quotes. So since I can stay within the quotes, I don't need this whole concatenation stuff. Okay? All of these characters that are used for special purpose in C sharp start with a slash. Means it is not a regular character. It has a designated job to do. And this character is slash n for new line. Okay, so now let me copy this. I'm not going to paste it yet. First of all, I'm going to teach you how you can comment instructions in C Sharp. How did we use comments in VB? Single quotes. Okay, in C Sharp, there are two kinds of comments. If you only want to comment a single line, you use two slashes like that. Then one line is commented. If you want to comment a block, then you start your commenting with a slash and an asterisk, which could be on a line of its own or it could be on an existing line, and you close it out with a asterisk and a slash. So this whole block is commented. Okay. Now let me paste what I just copied from the text pad. So welcome to C Sharp slash N, another .NET programming language. And when I run it, exactly the same output. You can tell the difference how I actually coded it. 